So the perseverance of them going from start at zero and do some, get some, do more, get more, do all, and get all, you can relate it to these three. And all. The cocoon, they must wiggle enough to get the fluid in the capillaries so their wings can dry and they can fly. And the third one is to get completely out of your comfort zone and be completely butt naked to go from the hermit shell out, completely exposed, to get to the new larger one because if you don't, you die. If you do, you grow. There is no middle ground. We're moving on to release attachment. Now, once you start to do the process, you see, and I'm just going to be touching on this real lightly, but there's a physical umbilical cord. There's an emotional umbilical cord, and then there's a spiritual umbilical cord. The physical one's done when they celebrate happy, trans or, uh, happy birthday. They made it here in physical form, winning lotto ticket. But there's an emotional umbilical cord between the mother and the offspring that is so critical that if it was never there, none of us would have make it. However, the umbilical cord expires at its latest at age two, which means you are emotionally attached to their outcomes. We must begin to let go and let God happen. We can dive into that more later. In nature, the child going from can't to can is very simple that if you were to take a butterfly that has its cocoon, it must do all the wiggling on its own in order to fly. If you help it, coddle it, kiss and coddle to its every whim and just help it because it's struggling and I want it to be the best, you will cripple it and it will not fly. This is true for our offspring. So the perseverance of them going from start at zero and do some, get some, do more, get more, do all and get all, you can relate it to these three and I'll hand it back to you, Bonnie. Think of the chicken egg. They must peck, 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 peck again and again and again and do it all on their own power to break out to have that life skill. The cocoon, they must wiggle enough to get the fluid in the capillaries so their wings can dry and they can fly. And the third one is to get completely out of your comfort zone and be completely butt naked to go from the hermit shell out, completely exposed to get to the new larger one because if you don't, you die. If you do, you grow. There is no middle ground. Back to you, Bonnie. Awesome. So yeah, basically that was the six steps. Tom has to go. I'm going to remove him from here. If you have any questions, comments, or observations, now would be a good time to put it into the chat. Uh, the replay will also be available if you come in late and you want the replay to the entire thing, make sure to put a comment underneath. And also, if you have been watching us for a while and you get it, like goal, plan, action, perseverance. Okay, I've heard this before. This makes so much sense, but you need some help putting it together, make sure to also put a comment underneath and we'll send you a link to book a discovery session with us. The discovery session, there's nothing to buy. So leave your credit cards at home, but we're here to give you everything that we've got to help you and your family get to the other side. You know what? You've been coaching with Thomas for a while. You know, mm -hmm. can you just share like in really quickly your experience before you let your child set goals and before you taught life skills to now he sets goals and you teach life skills? Can can you just share the difference? Sure. I, I felt like um, kind of like a tyrant and like a wolf in sheep's clothing because I wanted to be this, um, you know, positive parent. And I, I got on that positive parenting train and I was going to be super nice and loving. And we were going to have every day was going to be rainbows and sunshine. And I was not prepared for any challenges or any struggles or any obstacles that came my way. A lot of bumps in the road and um, none of the advice that I was reading, asking for, um, was getting us through these hurdles. And I felt like I was becoming the person I never thought I would be. And um, it was just a constant battle until I found CCFL and now we have plans and I see their goals and I have these, um, these great 
opening eye opening moments where I'm I'm not attached to those old emotions anymore. Oh, I lost you. All right, I'm muted out. Um, I was going to say, talk about the changes in the behavior of your children. And if it's easier to parent this way, because it might seem like a lot, like, oh, my gosh, like I have to make plans and I have to, I have to set goals and I have to do all of this stuff where really we're just used to going, get out of the car, you know, get to the car. we got to go. Is it easier or harder for you to parent this way? It's definitely like... I think I, I caught the, the tail end of like, um, of what Tom, did you hear that? I can do that. Um, of what Tom said about getting out of the shell and out of your comfort zone. So there are these periods of transition where it feels um, funky to just kind of get out of your old skin and into a new one. So it seems complicated, but the, but the formulas and everything are still so simple. So it's just getting used to this new skin and it's way easier. And, you know, when you, when you come through the other side, it's like, oh, this is it. You know, this is where I wanted to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have to say that too. Like as a mom, like Zachary is my 17 year old son. He was um, ODD, just like yours was um, at the same age at seven years old. He was oppositional defiant disorder. He was diagnosed with ADHD. They literally had him in a behavior classroom with like three other kids in the class. <laughs> I don't know. Like I, his life would not have been good um, without the creating champions for life. So now he's 17. He works full time. We have a really great relationship and we're recording podcast episodes. So we're going to be airing those really soon. And yesterday he made note, like I wrote down some notes and he goes, yeah, people talk about parenting and it just like drives me nuts. Like what they think it would be good parenting. Like even his friends are talking about, well, when I'm a parent, it's going to be like this. And he goes, it kind of like is really frustrating. He goes, parents should be the child's person. And, and the kids should be the parents person. You should never feel awkward going like being able to go to your parent to share something that you've experienced or gone through. And so we're going to podcast about that. But you feel like that you have this relationship now going on with your children. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, my mom has made comments, you know, like we, we the way that we have a rapport with each other, um, especially Rowan, where he, he can come to me and he's comfortable saying you know, I did this, or I'm thinking that, and that's huge, you know, and, and I'm able to just be the sponge and listen and just, you know, be the person he needs to just hear him out. Yeah, awesome.